Hey guys, uh, so this has been a long time coming. I'm uh, finishing up the last of the Thor Ragnarok um, series. And guys, sorry about the background noise if um, my microphone is picking it up. It is 40 degrees here in the UK. And guys, it is hot. All of my windows are open and my fan is blaring because it's just too hot for me to uh, be comfortable. So sorry about the background noise. Anyway, so we pick up now with the Odin Force or the Thor Force. Which is a power that enables Thor and his father Odin to tap into a near infinite level of power that rivals the most strongest beings in the Marvel Universe. Thor has inherited this ability, becoming the rightful king of Asgard. In his weakened state, having even the odds, he faces Fenra, but Thor is then saved by the timely arrival of Beta Ray Bill, who saves him. Having been saved by Beta Ray Bill, and as the conflict ends, Beta Ray Bill refuses to leave Thor's side. Now, Beta Ray Bill made his first appearance in the mighty Thor Issue 337, under the Walt Simon run. Since then, Beta Ray Bill has become an ally to the Asgardians, even capable, capable of wielding Mjolnir, and then, and then his own hammer, Stormbreaker. The loyalty and friendship Bill has towards Thor is touching and powerful, but Thor recognises that this is not his fight. Believing this to be a battle between the Asgardian gods and Loki's forces, Thor journeys to seek knowledge and strength that will help him defeat Loki. He makes a sacrifice to the Odin Force in order to acquire knowledge. Odin himself also did the same, meaning that losing an eye is no longer enough. Thor sacrifices both eyes and his life in order to gain access to the runes. Here he discovers Ragnarok is a never-ending cycle of death and destruction, where the Asgardians are killed and reborn over and over, which feeds the ones who live above in shadow. Odin knew about this and wanted Thor to break the cycle, freeing the Asgardians. Thor gains the power of the runes, becoming Rune King Thor, and is now fully capable of using the Thor Force. The best way so the best way to describe Ragnarok, as well as the runes, is kind of to compare it with the Matrix. So the runes allow Thor to see the code of the universe, allowing Thor to see the reality for what it is. Ragnarok and the Matrix are never-ending cycles, constantly rebooting the Asgardian and allowing the ones who live above in shadow to feed upon them. Because the Asgardians are a warrior race who basically live and die by the glory of the sword, the ones who live above in shadow are essentially destroying the Asgardian culture. So, with the full force of the Thor Force, Thor returns to Asgard and faces his brother Loki, severing his head in the process. Together, they set about ensuring the, the events of Ragnarok transpire, making a deal with Serta, and
and reforging Mjolnir. Surtur then goes on to destroy Asgard. With Asgard being destroyed, Thor faces the ones who live above in shadow, with Mjolnir in tow, and destroys the tapestry that the ones who live above in shadow use to feed on the Asgardian gods. This ends the Asgardian gods and the control that the ones who, who live above in shadow had. Thor's humanity was not learned from Asgard like Odin or his father, but rather it was learned from Midgard, making his actions unpredictable. Humanity always finds a way to survive, to be free from oppression, and to be the kings of our lives. Thor and the Asgardians will find a way to return to the Marvel Universe. So, thank you for um, waiting so long to actually get this video, and do stay tuned for more uh, Marvel content, and please subscribe if you haven't done so already, because there's more content coming.